Hello and welcome to the Miskatonic Playhouse Matinee. I am your keeper for the evening, John Hedge, and I am delighted to be bringing you Anti-Diluvians by Tiffany Funk, which is a very special one for us because it was the gold medal winner in our Miskatonic Repository Scenario Competition at the end of last year in 2022. And so we're going to be playing it for you here on the matinee feed. And I've assembled a great little group of adventurers to go through this scenario with me. Uh, First of all, our regular host and regular miscreant, T.A. Newman. Hello. Uh, This evening I shall be playing Howard Busby, who is a mechanic who lives in Fargo. And another one of our regulars, Phaedra, is here too. Hello. uh, Today I'm playing Martha Myers who is a 45-year-old farmer. And we've been uh, scraping through the bottom of the barrel from some of our special guests today, and we have (laughs) Butcho, mostly from Symphony Entertainment, but also all over the place. Hi, Butcho. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, It's nice to be scraped off the bottom of the barrel, honestly. Uh, Today I'm playing Clifford Orkney. He is a grifter from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Excellent. And it is the height of the Great Depression, and you are all working in America. And for one reason or all, you're all looking for work. But I have some good news for you all, which is that a great new project called the New Deal has passed. And the New Deal has begun revitalizing America, and a whole bunch of different organizations have begun doing work all over the country. Specifically, you've been, right now, you've been hired by the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, and you've been hired to go and help out with the building of a dam. And this dam is in a place called Tillings, South Dakota. The dam is about to flood an entire very large area with water, building a new reservoir that it's meant to bring uh, prosperity to the land around it in a, an area that is being ravaged by the Dust Bowl. So for one reason or another, each of you is down on your luck and you've accepted this contract to go and work at the Tillings boarding house. And specifically, you're being sent just before they blow the dam and make this reservoir. And the people are just leaving. It's the final people leaving. And what you're doing is you've been sent to do a few tasks and you've got to meet someone named Jim Burr. And the three of you find your own ways to Tillings and you find your way into this, quite frankly, horrid little broken falling to bits town in the middle of South Dakota. And you walk into this bar and a man is sitting behind the desk. He's got a big red nose. It's early in the day, but he looks a little bit drunk. And every single surface is covered in dust. Employment office sure is scraping the bottom of the barrel, ain't they? Well, might as well get on with it. Welcome to Tillings, land of plenty. So I'm told you are the Fed's last-ditch effort to drag the poor wretches out of the reservoir before the flood comes. Quite biblical, ain't it? Well. Good luck. We still haven't gotten an accurate count of the folks left down there. The engineers over the dam set, they are itching to pull the switches on the damn thing and just drown the whole lot of them. He barely conceals it as he just takes a swig from a brown liquor bag and a glass behind his desk. (coughs) Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, The boy priest. Uh, Father... What's his name? Xavier. All right. From here... I need you to head north to St. Christopher's. It's the local church. You talk to a a man named Father Algernon Xavier. See if he needs help hefting any of the last coffins out of the grounds. I need them out of here. I don't care where they go. Just get them the hell out of the flood zone, okay? I don't want any old coffins bobbing up on this brand new fresh water. You understand? Now. (sighs) All right. It says here the Beauforts haven't vacated yet. Apparently, they were meant to be uh, waiting on some payout. You've got a letter for them here. Take the letter. Ask the priest for directions to the Beaufort farm. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere on the floodplain. All right. And once you've done those things, I need you to meet me at 5 p.m., 5 o'clock sharp, 
at the quarry at the other end of the flood zone. From there, we'll take some samples out, and we'll get out of this place before the flood comes. All right, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Clifford steps outside. The three of you are standing outside this center, having just experienced all of that very, very quickly, looking at one another uh, in confusion. Well, then I'm going to remove my, uh, my, my switchblade and uh, play with it nervously. Uh, that was a lot of information, and I'm, I'm not a brilliant man, uh, so I'm struggling to keep it all kind of intact. Uh, but I know we go to the church first, so... Okay. A little weird. The first step is as good as any. I say we just go, then we'll be over and done with, hopefully by the end of the day. Oh, well, uh, Martha uh, turns around. Uh, 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 miss, uh, just before we go, we, we should probably uh, say hello. Uh, just, uh, it's, it's a mighty fine uh, knife you got there. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I've had this for. For a few years, uh, kind of a a lucky, kind of a lucky thing for me, you know. Uh, when I get nervous, I play with it, but I'm I'm very safe with it. Oh sure, yeah, lucky lucky blade, yeah, that's that's uh that's normal. Um, oh miss miss, and if if Martha's walking away, uh, he'll kind of this this short little man with a with a bushy mustache kind of like trots after her. Um, are you are you leading the way? Are you there, miss? Well, it's it's not too far to the church, and if you don't mind, I do have my farm to get back to eventually. So, oh. uh, great to meet you, though. Great to meet you. Yeah, yeah, great to meet you. Great to meet you. Uh, mm. What did you say your name was there? Martha Myers. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, how, how rude of me. No, no, and not at you all. You both are... Oh, I'm Howard. Uh Nice to meet you. This uh, this mm. this here is. Um, I, I'm I'm sorry. Did you did you say your name was? Um... My name's Clifford. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I just got bowled over by all the information. Is all. Oh well, we 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 we're all good. We we go to the church. Uh, we speak to Father Xavier Algernon, I believe his name was, and then uh, we got to go and pop in and say hello to the Beauforts. Seems simple enough. And, and we have the letter. And we have so we... the letter. Yep. Grab that. Yeah, Let's we have assume that. that Martha has the letter. <laughs> okay, and I have the letter. Fine and dandy. Here, I will keep it safe in my bag. Uh, Martha has a, a lovely bag that she keeps on her side, which is kind of uh, a traditional Native American weave. And it's not particularly far to the church. It's sort of just outside the edge of town. But of course, it's a very run-down, very dust-covered town. So even though it's quite new in many ways, it's not an old town, it looks dilapidated. It's just the build-up of dust is everywhere in every nook and cranny. And these wooden buildings simply are not managing to deal with this build-up. It's in the air as well. Your <clears throat> eyes hurt just being here. And when you get outside of town a little bit and walk up to the church, it's notable because it's brand new. It's on a small little hill and there's someone has put a lot of work into making sure that grass grows around it and it's painted white probably in the last couple of days because it's that shiny and it's got a little cross on the top. It's a very classic, beautiful little place. And as you arrive at this church, a small smiling man appears and gives you a wave, sort of wearing a small pair of glasses. He's got the dog collar on, and he says, "Hey, hey, hey! Hi, hi, hi! You must be from the deep WPA. You're my crew, aren't you?" Uh, yes, yes, sir. We are. Yeah. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you, Xavier. Uh, call me Father Xavier. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, right. Well, we have just been getting on and having the best of times. Um. How are you doing? How's everything going? Uh, you know, things could be better, but they could also be worse. Right, right. Well, come on in. Come on in. This dust storm's really horrible. It's a bit, a little bit nicer inside the church. Your uh, church there is uh, is looking uh, looking uh, nice and shiny. 
Yeah, yeah, when they, um, when they, uh, hit the button and flood this place, we're going to be right on the very edge of the reservoir. Apparently, it's going to be just gorgeous. I can't wait. I can't wait. Anyway, come on in, come on in. And he sort of drags the three of you into this small church. And inside, it looks like it's been torn to pieces. It's been, like, pulled apart. Um, give me a uh, spot hidden to everyone, please. Um, small oh. <clears throat> Ooh, hard success. I've got a 65. So for those who are listening, we're rolling online on roll 20 for the most part. So if you don't hear us say the rolls, we apologize. Um, we'll do our best. 65 to 25. Fail for me. A five. What? So is that a hard or an extreme success, Vedra? Oh, no, sorry. I rolled a 78 over 40, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got a 10 under, 10 under 30. That's a hard success. So, Clifford, you've, you've turned a few places over in your time very, very quickly, and that's the feel of this place. It's not... It, like, it, it's been done so that it maybe looks a little bit like it's been... Um, just sporadic mess, but but you've searched a few places. This this feels like a place that's been searched. And Xavier's like, come on in, come on in. Sorry, um, I'm brand new here. This is my first time in this church myself. Well, one of my first times in this church myself. And I'm just kind of getting it ready. So it's a complete mess, this place. But you should see, I have discovered the most interesting things when digging up those graves. We have found fossils. Can you believe it? Fossils. Uh... Father, uh, what happened in here? Are you, do you know? And, and why does it look? Why did nothing happen to the outside of the church? It, it's oh, don't worry about that. We've just been in a bit of a rush, and I've had the boys in. We're getting everything out of here. We're redoing things. I've only just arrived. Oh, it's, it's just a mess. It's, don't worry. It's too a much remodel. About it. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Father, uh, <clears throat> did did you say? Uh... You, uh, you, you found some fossils. Can you believe this? So it turns out I've been doing a little bit of reading on this. This whole area, it actually used to be a giant sea in the pre-biblical times, in the antediluvian times. This place used to be under the ocean. And so what you can find here, and he shows you on his desk, is just covered in these fossils you can find ancient sea creatures right under our very feet is that not just the work of god is that not just something really special oh wow that is special uh, yeah that that is special yeah um uh martha you uh you 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 said you have a farm have you ever you ever found anything like that no i i meant because you're in the ground you know and you you dig in and uh it's not impossible that you have martha no uh, um, one time I found something. I I wasn't sure what it was. I I put it in my home. I I love the majesty of nature. Xavier is nodding along a little bit too like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Father, did you? Uh, see, can you can you tell? Uh, what what you dug up there? Well, yeah, I've found a whole lot of different uh, variations. I don't know too much about them. I'm, I'm learning, but oh, they're so interesting, aren't they? Anyway, I, I, it's probably you all have some jobs to do. Can I help with whatever you need to do? What are you? Oh. What have you been sent exactly to do? I know that you're from the WPA, but uh, Jim just told me to help you all out. Well, uh... some directions to the Euford farm would be appreciated. We're also here to help you the Beaufort farm. with coffins. Beaufort, that's the one. Oh, brilliant. Oh. oh, this is just, oh, this is a little bit embarrassing. I already got two of the local boys to come and help me get rid of those coffins. They're out there now. Um, two of the Fisk boys, Yona and Yop. They're a great, great pair, great pair. But if you want to head out there now, I'm sure you can help them finish the job. Uh, sure. Uh... I'm I'm so sorry. I'm kind of embarrassed. This is this is almost certainly my fault. I didn't realize that was a job for you. I thought that was my job to get rid of those coffins. So I've been doing it all day. 
Well, I don't think well, that's a problem necessarily. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, as long as it gets done, right? Yeah, no, no need. Yeah, no need for uh, embarrassment here. We're all on the uh, same team. Looks like we can move ahead of schedule with our tasks. Oh, was there anybody else, uh, Father, in, in in the town that you uh, you thought maybe needed a a little rat a tat tat on the door and say, "Hey, the flood's coming." Well, the town itself ain't going to go ain't going to be flooded. It's those in the actual flood zone, which is just past the line of the church. Oh, I believe yeah. there's a couple of farms out there. Um, but I'm not too familiar. And then on the way on the other side of the reservoir, there's a quarry, which I think still has some folk and some supplies that you'll need to get out to. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're basically the, ta- the, we're the, we're the tail end of the cleanup crew, basically. I mean, that's my impression. Okay. I wouldn't take too long either, because I think they're going to blow the dam at seven. So you guys want to be out there. Oh, we better go and help those, uh, those fist boys then. Two questions. What, yeah. What time of day is it? And how far away is the quarry? Like, how long How long would it take us to get there? It's just gone 12 o'clock. And if you were to walk to the quarry pretty much nonstop, you'd probably get there around 5, oh. which is the time Jim Burr asked you to get there. Okay, so oh. we got to book it. We have an impossible task ahead of us. Are, are there any uh, modes of transportation available? To us, I think the Fisk boys have a van. That might be helpful if we're going to see. Um, I cannot pronounce their names. I have <laughs> put it in my my brain the wrong way. Bo- the Bofords. Bo Bo Bo. <laughs> Bo Bofords. Okay. Bofords. The Bofords. I think it's I think it's sort of easy to do it pleasantly in an American accent. The Bofords. <laughs> yeah. Bofords. The Bofords. <laughs> If we are to go see the Beauforts and then make it to the to the quarry in time, it might be helpful to have some some mode of transportation. So we we could ask them for the van after we help them. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's go and ask those. Uh, 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 did you say Yona and Yab, uh, the the Fisk boys? Yes. Yeah. 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 Let me. You know what? You know what? Uh, let me take you over there and like just make sure that Yona and Yab know you're there to help. Come on, come on, come on. And he sort of like takes you out. And um, with that, I'm going to let that hard uh, spot hidden roll from earlier ride, Butcho. And um, you spot an odd symbol on the way out, just carved into the door. And then when you see it in one place, you begin, actually, there's been a couple of symbols carved into a few places places but you're kind of because you're following the father you're in a bit of a rush mm-hmm. so you don't really pick up on it but there's there's something more here it's like it's just it's sort of sitting with your like um sitting in the back of your mind you know there's something here but you don't really know what it is yet and you're just being rushed on so you follow the father out and you head up as- and as you're heading out of the church sorry oh, good as you're heading out of the church the first thing you come to is this sort of this line and it's got a big um, plaque up and there's some uh, uh, rope hanging between some pitons saying like, do not cross flood zone. And you head down this road into this graveyard where, yes, there are what appear to be two men who are carrying a number of um, coffins and they are piling them up in a van and what's interesting and particularly important to note about these two men is that they are covered from head to toe in rags so their um, their actual bodies, their skin is not visible at all and, and uh, as you stop just outside the graveyard watching them work the father turns to you and says it's a real shame the boys have a, a rare condition called zero drama pigmentation, but the Lord works in mysterious ways, and I will tell you, he made some hard workers in those boys. They're allergic to sunlight. In fact, apparently their whole family is. Can you believe this? But I'll tell you what. I met them, and I listened to their pleas, and I, 
I know that they are hard workers, these boys. The Lord loves them. He really does. There's a thing in the back of my mind, because I am something of a confidence man. I like to read people and see who is an easy mark. Yeah. The hackles on my neck are a bit up, so I think I'd like to mm-hmm. do a psychology roll on I think Father Xavier. That you should definitely do a psychology roll on Xavier. Beautiful. I also have a, a, a question. Now, uh, there's a certain style to the NPC portraits of this scenario. Um, of course, these two, but also the priest. They don't look like well slash human is that more of a stylistic choice or do they actually look like that because i feel like martha might be a bit more (laughs) (laughs) i understand your concern (laughs) the so the artwork in this is beautiful but it's Mm -hmm. also odd yes there's something unhealthy yeah I think that Xavier appears to be a normal human person to you. Okay. Good. Whereas these two boys look covered in rags, so you can't tell anything about what they look like. You Mm -hmm. can just see darkness. Okay. So yes, they do look really odd. Um, And the father's explanation is... Maybe not putting your mind at rest as much as maybe you would want to it to. Your the result of your psychology roll, please, Clifford. Uh, it was a seven under thirty-five for an extreme success. Roll twenty is treating me very nicely. So what I'm going to give you with that extreme success is first of all that you feel confident in your suspicions that there is something wrong here. And more so, I think that the fa- the father has not noticed that you have built up those suspicions and he he feels confident that the three of you believe him what i'll say is that connecting the what the father's saying with things that you've heard said by priests in advance make you suspect that he is not a priest And no one else has any idea of that, Clifford. I'm going to hold on to that information for a minute. Uh, But when I get a chance, I will want to let Martha um, and Howard know that something feels wrong uh, on the sly. So, yeah, um, Howard and Martha, how are you reacting to... There's definitely more work to be done in front of you. Are you going down to the grave? Do you want to talk to the father some more? What are your actions? I think Martha will get to work, to be honest. She's not a very talkative person. She has grown up mostly in isolation doing farm work. Uh, She's very good at it. She will ask about the van, but she wants to do some work first to get on the good side. Um, With a psychology of 10, I'm assuming she thinks that everything is fine Um, (laughs) and there's no problems here. So... uh, yeah, she's going to start helping the two strange Excellent. boys. And on top of that, so Howard, uh, Martha goes down to do some work. I think Clifford's holding back a little bit. So what are you doing? <clears throat> Probably uh, just slightly hesitantly between the two. And then um, um, d- d- rather than addressing Clifford, who seems res- res- you know, a little bit um, hesitant here, <clears throat> possibly addressing uh, the father. Um, just... Oh well, uh, you know this. Uh, this uh, seems wonderful. Uh, I think uh, uh, Jonah, uh, Jonah, and, and and Job here uh, be be great to uh, to get to know them. And it sounds terrible that their 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 affliction. Um, do they talk about it, or is it you know? Do they not talk about? It? I don't want to put my foot in it because I like to meet people and I like to talk to people and I like to get to know them. And uh... oh, they're lovely boys. Don't worry about that. Oh no. The- Salt off the earth. I really appreciate those two. No, no, t- totally. They're not. They're not the most talkative, but they're farm workers. You know, they just turn up and do their job. Their whole family has been in this area for generations. I'm told. Oh, it's yeah. It's actually kind of sad. Yeah, the the flood area, I believe, um, is going to destroy their farm. Oh yeah. But uh, they got a good rate from the government for that land. 
And yeah. I believe that they're setting themselves somewhere up somewhere else different. So it should be good. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Well, um, well, are they all out of there, out of the dust bowl? I, uh, I believe so. Although, uh, Yonan Yab will be going across the land because they're heading, I think, to the quarry next to, uh, deliver oh. these, um, deliver oh, them well, to the new site. Well, that's where we're going. Uh, well, uh, d- 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 Father, uh, d- d- thank you, thank you. I think we'll speak to, uh, Jonah and Job, see if we can get on, uh, get on helping and get on trucking, huh? All right, have a good day, all. Oh, you have a and good day father, now. The father walks off in the direction that is different from either the graveyard or the church. Which direction does he go? He sort of goes along, back, as if he was going back along the line towards uh, the town. Well, uh, Clifford, uh, I think uh, maybe we should uh, take on a temporary pallbearer duties. What do you think? Uh, I think well, time is short today, so yeah, we should uh, we should slap some quick on it and get to work. Yeah. yeah. Martha, what I'm going to ask you to do here is give me a combined <clears throat> spot hidden and strength roll. Okay. There's something that will happen if you pass one of those, but <laughs> Something interesting will happen if there's a mixed success of different sorts. Okay, so we're looking at a strength of 65 and a spot hidden of 40. Okay. And I rolled a, a 51. So that is a success on the strength, but a failure on spot hidden. Okay. So, Howard and Clifford, what you experience is... A little bit of surprise that because Martha is um, kind of a wiry farmer looking woman, but the ease with which she begins moving these coffins around and doing a whole bunch of work with these two laborers is surprising. She seems really, really fit and strong. Uh, but Martha, you're just stuck into the work and you're getting on with it. Mm-hmm. And the two of you come and help? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, oh, think, yeah. I think, yeah. think we're all in. So I'm going to give you the same opportunity. So I want. Uh, Strength roll, and I want a uh, spot headed combined. Okay. Oh, I've got a 40 under 50 for strength. And... So, what's your spot headed? So, when you combine it, I just want one roll to tell. Oh, me sorry. What okay. Uh, 25. So, that would have been a, f- a success on strength, fail on spot headed. Cool. Oh, yeah. No, I failed both considerably. Okay. So, Howard, you're also pretty used to manual day's work and so you and martha get shifting and um yob and yona kind of like put up with you but clifford you've never done an honest day's work in your life let's be honest no no. i'm I'm, and so i'm more vocal i like to that's how i do business (laughs) and so you actually you try you actually try to sort of come in and help yona and yob and as you do the drop one of the uh coffins coffins to the ground and as they do, it makes an odd sound. Give me a listen roll. Is that everybody or Clifford? I'm just going to take it from Clifford at this stage. Uh, 71 over 40, so fail. Yeah. Um, but of course, you're just so embarrassed. You're not used to what you're doing. And you're still sort of thinking about that church and you're sort of brains processing what's going on here. Very preoccupied. So um, you're not, something's happening here, but you've not quite figured out what it was. And so as the three of you load these coffins on, the two boys sort of look at you and then get in the van and just drive off without a word. Heading oh, north. No. Oh, no. Oh. I was hoping uh, to ask sh- about that van. Shit, guys. I'm Job. Uh, uh, job. Oh, um, job. JJ's. I know this is my fault, and I'm very apologetic about it, because now we are on a worse time crunch. Oh, no, Clifford. We, there were no, uh, no passing the blame around here. Isn't that right, Martha? Uh, yes. It's all right. I'm sure we'll make it there on time I somehow. I see. <clears throat> Damn. Uh, okay. What do we say? Uh, best foot forward? That's the only Let's one. go deliver that letter. Maybe they will have a vehicle we can borrow. Oh, there you go. Now we're thinking like a team. Options are good. I like it. Okay. Yeah, and um, 
as you sort of watch the dust build up and power its way, uh, so the dust build up from the van heading away from you and powering up into the sky, it meets this building dust storm that's coming in around you. And it is, it's getting stormy and the wind is blowing harder and the visibility isn't great. It is possible to tell the difference between what is and isn't the road and it's not too just different to figure out which way is direct north, which is the way the road goes. And you've been given directions to the Beaufort farm by the priest who told you there's a left turn, you take it. And so this is looking pretty easy to do and you head off down and what I want from one of you is a tracking roll. You're going to find the Beaufort farm, but I just want to kind of know what sort of schedule that the three of you are on. Uh, and I also want a constitution <coughs> roll from all three of you just to see how you're dealing with the dust. So who's leading? I'm happy to take that track if everyone is happy with it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, Martha. <laughs> hmm? Martha, I think you actually know this quite well, so I'm going to give you a bonus die on your track for this. Because this feels like a thing that you will be able to do. Okay. So we got a 41 over 60 for track. So that is a success. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, Martha is just going ahead, just not yeah. wanting to make chit chat. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite easy for you to tell what is road and what isn't road. And so even though the dust is up, it's pretty simple and you just lead the boys forward can I have constitution rolls from all three of you as you're heading into this uh, fairly um oh i uh, i got an 11 over 60 i got a 63 okay. over 60 so i'm gonna spend three points of luck if necessary <laughs> Just to keep things I've got a 56 over 50 and i want to spend six points of luck but i am the group luck so it's a difficult choice. No one likes her. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's say this, Martha, because it's not going to be a massive problem if you fail this, uh, because okay. you've led the way. What it is is that you're feeling kind of exhausted because you've had to lead them through this dust storm, and it is building, and it is a little bit dark. And so when you arrive at the Beaufort farm, um, you really want to get in out of the dust. You feel kind of rubbish. And if possible, you'd like to wash your face. You have those things in your head as you arrive. Okay. And the three of you are making your way to the Beaufort farm. And it took you like an, more than an hour to get there. It took you like 90 minutes of walking to get to this place. So it's gone. It's getting towards 2 p.m. now. It has been a little bit and you've eaten a bunch of your time. And when you get to the Beaufort farm, there is a, a big van sat outside of what was once clearly a beautiful little farmhouse. There's enough sun still in the sky in amongst all of this dust to give you an impression that this was once probably quite wonderful. There's a small picket fence, there is a big barn at one side, and there's a fairly large amount of land. At one point, this was probably a fairly nice, small farm run by the Beauforts, which is this um, two different people that you meet. Uh, the first is a man who is tinkering with the engine of a truck. It seems that something's not quite working and he's trying to get it fixed. And the truck is being filled by this other woman uh, who is going back and forward um, from the house and bringing more and more things into the back of this van. It's one of those open top type things, um, pickup trucks. And the it's piled pretty high, but she's got it like uh, held down with a rope and it looks like it's in pretty good nick. And the both of them are working intently as you sort of approach. And the woman shouts, Yeah, are you all from the, the WPA? Y yes, ma'am, we are. Uh, you got my check? We do indeed. Uh, I was hoping... Martha reaches into her bag and shows it. The letter. We're, we're having... Excellent, excellent. And she just snaps out of your hands. All right. At least one good thing in this godforsaken day. Well, ma'am, we, we may have a, a small favor to ask, uh, if, if it's possible. Uh, and I really want to lay the charm on thick because it seems like she is not amenable to us in any way. Um, 
ma'am, uh, is it possible? Oh, you poor dears. You've been out there in that dust storm for walking properly for 90 minutes. No, they don't give you any sort of transportation. Uh, no, he, no, oh, come on, come on in, come on in, come on in. Please come in. Thank you. I oh, would wow. love to use your uh, washroom. Yeah. And Please. this woman sort of like motherly sort of brings you in sort of into her little um, home and you walk in and it's it's beautiful. It really is. It's uh, you haven't seen a place that didn't have dust in it for hours. Even the church had dust kind of flowing into it because the door was left open. But in here, most of it's gone. And inside, there's a number of different pieces of furniture missing. But it was probably fairly idyllic. It's this tiny little homestead. Looks clearly built by hand and well cared for. And as she offers you wet rags to clean your face and she sort of offers you bits and pieces, she tootles around and says, I'm sorry, we don't have a lot of supplies left, but, uh, yeah, um, I am sorry. How are y'all doing out there? Is everything all right? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Mrs. It's, Beaufort, it's, 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 it's good. Um, I, uh, yeah. We were hoping that you might have a, a bit of extra transportation, <laughs> potentially. Um See, we have to get up to the quarry uh, to finish uh, helping people get removed before the the dam comes down uh, and fills the plain. Um, and our, our and this woman sort of like sort of turns and she goes, Carter, and the man from her side goes, What? <laughs> that pickup working yet? No. I'm sorry, we'd, we'd, we'd absolutely love to help, but the pickup's not working, and I've got more work to do, and I need to get the rest of this stuff into the van. And- oh, uh, excuse me, uh, miss. Um, I, well, firstly, can I just say, wow, what a, what a beautiful home. Just wow. I, it's really lovely. Um, but uh, you, you, you're having trouble out there, are you, with your, with your, with your car? Yeah, Carter can't get it to start. I don't know the first damn thing about vehicles, so... Oh, well, uh, you're in luck. Uh, uh, I think uh, maybe... We, 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 we might could, be able to help. We could help here. Yeah. Well, whoever knows about, about van- cars, you get out there to pick up. The rest of you, come with me and we'll get some of this stuff loaded up. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll have time to give you a lift. Oh yeah, uh, Cl- Clifford, do you uh, you you know your cars? Oh, I think I know my cars. Well, uh, I think between the two of us, we can get the uh, get that little uh, buzz box out there, clicking and clacking. Um, it, ma'am, can we uh, can we give it a look and and see if we can't help you? By all means. Great. Clifford will head outside. Oh, sorry, I was muted this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like the fact wow. that you didn't jump up and like shout at the two men for going to fix the car when I did. I was I was like, wow, men, <laughs> completely ignore. I know about cars. I know about cars. I'm like, well, Martha, I guess you've we been go. Martha, like, you've been wow. very quiet this whole time. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is this is unacceptable. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Mother has been staring and then eventually says, I also know about cars if oh. you need help. Well, maybe we should ro- Rochambeau it. So are the three of you going to go and cluster <laughs> around the car and leave this poor woman to carry <laughs> things by herself? Who well, looks uh, like they know most about cars? <laughs> um, are, we, are we allowed to talk stats, Keeper? I, haven't, I have no problem. We can actually, we can translate it into... One time I did something uh, to a car that would require I have at least 50% in oh, dry well. water. <laughs> One time I uh, repaired the mechanics on a car and I, I gave it a bloody good, uh, you know, 60% worth of my uh, my attitude. Yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> it's very impressive. I, I, I think I think Howard's our man for this one. Uh, mine's pretty good, but it's, it's uh, you know, eh, it's a 50-50 shot with me, so... <laughs> oh, okay, well, well uh, How about uh, if, you, if you need us to give you some Bonus um, Oh yeah Vibes <laughs> Oh yeah <laughs> Yeah uh, I, I'll be outside I'll, I'll, give, uh, I'll give you a call if I, if I need a hand 
I'm also quite good at lifting things. So, so Howard, <laughs> you're going to fix this car, but let's see what sort of time scale you take on that. Give me a... What's your role for this? Would it make sense for one of us to follow and give a bonus die oh, yeah. from give the get-go? I think he's going to repair the car because he's a mechanic. Mechanical repair. Yeah, for the time scale. Yeah, he can give me a mechanical repair role and we can move forward from there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 40 under 60. Nice. I okay. uh, mechanically repaired the hell out of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Clifford, you've been sort of trying to charm Ellie a little bit and being quite nice to her. And you've also now been helping her with these boxes. So why don't you go ahead and give me that charm roll to see if she begins talking to you a little bit. Okay. Uh, I would also speak on the, the loveliness of the house because we haven't seen anything like it in a while. That's a 71 over 50, so that's a failure. Okay. Um, do you want to push or change this roll in any way, or should we let that ride? You know, I do want to push it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Buford, um, how long have, have you been here, uh, you and your husband? Uh, are, are you looking forward to wherever you're going to after this? This is how I'm trying to push this. Oh, mm -mm. oh, that's a 94 over 50. Oh, no. You know, I've met men like you. I've met men like you so many times. Coming here, think you know best with your uh, city boy hands, city boy face. Why don't you just stick to uh, moving boxes, boy? All right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I was just trying to make uh, a Mother chuckles because she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, you, I will, uh, she's not talking to Clifford anymore and won't talk to him at all anymore. <laughs> but uh, you can feel free to also try and strike a conversation or take some sort of action here. Um, this conversation is to get us the vehicle because she's kind of agreed. What are we trying to get out of this? I'm wondering, because honestly, Martha doesn't seem like, like she has zero <laughs> extra points in any of the social skills. She's not the type. I think she's just going to do an impressively efficient job moving everything. Um, I like that. And just I like be that. pleasant about it. <laughs> I'm going to take a straight up strength roll to see what happens then. <laughs> that is an 18 over 65, which I'm sure is some kind of good success. <laughs> oh, it's a hard which, success. There it is. Definitely at least a hard success. So there's a moment after about 30 minutes or so of the two of you working side by side where you share a small canteen of water and she turns to you and she says, you all uh, heading out the quarry? That's right, ma'am. Terrible thing that happened there. Absolutely terrible. Uh, how oh. how so? Uh, oh, they didn't tell you? What ha happened? Oh, man, it's, you know what? I think... Sometimes, eh? Sometimes. So, a lot of the problems around here, it don't come from that quarry. It just moved in, you know? Not a couple miles from here, and then began drilling into the ground, blowing stuff up, explosions. There were earthquakes. There were genuine earthquakes. It really damaged the land, you know? Oh, things human. seeping in, all sorts of things. So it was no wonder when people started complaining about it, they were damaging the crops. But, you know, the thing is, right, I don't think it was right when they done that to that boy, you know? I just think that sometimes, you know, <clears throat> sure, folk were angry, but, you know, there was no cause for the sabotage, and that boy, poor boy, the coyotes had torn him to par apart, you know? It was just wrong. They killed the boy. It was some worker at the mine, and they assume and they assume that it was something to do with some of the sabotages. It was, you know, we weren't, we were good God-fearing people. We'd never do anything to sort, but you gotta understand, times are rough out here, and that quarry was making our lives harder. It's unsurprising one of the local farmers began sabotaging their equipment. You know what I'm so, saying? 
That what I'm saying is that that place ain't safe. To 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 nature for it's safe for for nature or it, it's not nothing fancy like nature. They were poisoning the groundwater. They were causing earthquakes. They're making it unsafe. When does human greed end? Yeah. And I think as a farmer, you kind of like, you're nodding along to a lot of this. You've had poisoned mm-hmm. groundwater. You've had some of these issues uh, to do with uh, a local quarry near you as well. Yeah. And I think what what's chiming in for you about this story is that she's not telling you everything. So she's telling you a little bit. She's gossiping, sure, because you're someone that she can gossip to. But there's lots missing here. There is. We have to go to the quarry today. Is there anything I need to know to stay safe? Stay safe? I mean, if I were you, I would uh, get your job done and then I would get the hell out of this Tilling's Reservoir as fast as you can. Well, that's the plan. Uh, Hopefully uh, Howard can help get the vehicle repaired so that we can... (laughs) Oh, it's looking good. Oh, yeah. Well, that sounds good out there. I like the sound of that. That's promising. Sure. Um, let's actually pivot back to um, Carter. Uh, Howard and Carter, you're outside trying to... Sorry, Howard Carter is this man that you're working with. Uh, Howard, you're getting... You, you eventually, after about 15 minutes of work, you get this car working. And during that time, Carter's like, uh, so what's it like working for the WPA? Good money? Oh, uh, well, uh, ha, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's money, you know? You never look at well, this economy. In the mouth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about you? How, how about being out here? I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful, yeah? You know what? It was. <sighs> when we got this land, Maybe 15 years ago, Ellie and I were, we were newlyweds and we were like, and we got the parcel of land and government grant to go out and, you know, build a homestead. And we oh, did. Wow. And for a time, you know, it was thriving, but yeah. uh, things that happened over the course of the last few months have been, mm-hmm. honestly, they freaked me out and I'm glad to be going. We're going to go, uh, we're going to go live with uh, Ellie's sister up in Illinois. Oh, uh, why, you, uh. You said something that scared you there. You know, we used to, we used to have livestock. We used to have cows. We used to have sheep. Oh. But um, they disappeared. They say it was coyotes, but, you know. Ki- coyotes? I don't sleep too well these days, so, you know, sometimes I get my job done early. Oh, You know, I yeah. go out before Ellie wakes up, and I, well, you know, I milk the cows, I feed the sheep. But... Running out, you know. So the last few weeks has just been old Betsy. Or oh, you, uh, you, you, you don't think uh, someone's been uh, cattle wrangling there? I, I heard oh, that's a thing. I, the thing is, here's where it gets weird, right? So I was up three nights ago, and I'm looking after Betsy. This is the night before she disappears, and um, oh, I go over, yeah. And I see movement by the house, right? And there's these weird two glowing eyes. Oh. Just on the edge. Looks like they're staring at me. I freeze, right? Yeah. And I swear, I was there for like a minute. And then they were gone, right? You know the weird part? If they was eyes, I was looking at them. I was looking at them for like more than a minute. Oh. In this dusty weather, man, they didn't blink once. Not oh. once. That's not right. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't human. I'll tell you that. So Ellie oh, and I, yeah. we're getting the hell out of here. Next day, the horse. Next day, the cow is gone. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting Ellie out of here. We're packing our things up, and we are going to Illinois. You know what I mean? So, uh, um, Carter, what, what, what do you think it was then? I don't know, man. 
But oh. with the deaths of the kids and the ki- torn to bits by a coyote and the animals going and the land oh, dying, the kids. What? What? What are the kids? What is the thing with the kids? <sighs> there was um, there was sabotage. Local farmers were sabotaging the local quarry because they wanted it to stop. Right. Oh, okay. But then someone went too far. They hurt a kid. I assume they hurt him. But uh, whatever happened to him, he ended up getting torn apart by the coyotes. Oh, these these coyotes. Work of the work of the quarry stopped after that, you know. Okay. Workers down tools, you know. You can't work if you think you're going. Someone's going to kill you. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, we 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 gotta go uh, up to the quarry. You see. It's, it's it's how we're we're getting out of here. Yeah, you guys said you needed a lift. We could probably get you out there. Oh yeah, yeah. That that yeah. that'd be right. Yeah. You need to go anywhere else first. Uh well, you you best probably ask him, Martha. She uh she seems to know uh, where we're going and what 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 we're doing. Uh Clifford and I. Uh, yep, we fall in line. That's right. Okay, well, why don't we assemble the three of you together? <laughs> Maybe you take a short break, have some water. You're a little bit ahead of schedule now. It's probably close to three o'clock. You've got time, and you've got a wee bit of time to chat if you have any ideas. Yes. Uh, can you remind me, are we supposed to convince these guys to leave the dust bowl? You were supposed to convince them to leave, but you also had a check for them, which you handed over, and mm-hmm. they seem like they're ready to leave. Okay, so we don't need to convince them they're not against it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So while Clifford was moving boxes, like after his interaction with, with Ellie, uh, I think he would just dive into the work and just stop trying to make small talk. Um, but while he's m- helping move stuff around, he would look for that symbol he saw in the church. And just yeah. like just cursory glances here and there, not like actively searching um, for it. Yeah, you are... There is nothing to find, so you don't find anything. There's no world to be made there. Well, then I think if we are done moving boxes, I think I would probably step outside to to check on Howard uh, and Carter uh, with the sound of the engine. Yeah, the, uh, the car is working, and it's mostly full. And Howard, Martha, and Clifford, the three of you are having some water. And I think it's probably time to have a wee chat. Oh, how's it going there? Well, I think we're done. Uh, we are ready to go, uh, and uh, I am under the impression that moving fast is even more important than I had initially anticipated. I would agree, only because I feel embarrassed. <laughs> oh, uh, Martha, what what do you mean with that? Well, I've been given the impression that the quarry is a is a dangerous place not only for the world but also to be in at the moment there's some conflict uh that led to the death of a poor boy yeah and uh well i was advised ellie advised me that we should move fast Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, Carter, he, um, or he said, he said about a boy, uh, and about, uh, the coyotes. The same boy. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, I mean, he said children, uh, so, uh, boy, boys, boys and girls, uh, who knows, but, uh, community rattled here, and, uh, you know, he, uh, well, he, um, told me a story about, uh, about a person, about a, about a man, about a, man person who came up to his house in the night with gold eyes and didn't blink in a storm and all their animals they've been going they've been disappearing they've been vermouthing what exactly are we walking into do we do we need to arm ourselves oh hmm Clifford uh that is probably a good idea if uh, did you mention coyotes as well? 
We oh, yeah. The God of God. I, I don't know if it is coyotes, though. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, when he mentioned the uh, the yellowy eyes, the golden eyes that uh, weren't blinking, I wasn't thinking about coyotes. Yeah, I don't, I don't think those He's... are normal for coyotes, no. Oh, no. Uh, Clifford, Could it have you... been some sort of spirit? Oh no! This was a this was a man. This was a this was a person uh, standing uh, and looking at him, and he stood still and he froze. Oh yeah. Hmm. Uh, Clifford, you you have your 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 knife. I've got my switchblade. Yeah, it's uh, I yeah, mean, it's, it's good for up close work. Uh, Maybe the Bofords have something to lend us. This is what oh, I was I think, uh, thinking as well. Yeah, maybe they'd be uh, they'd be inclined because we fixed their car. I, I don't know that I should be the one to ask. However, uh, normal. Oh. No, he is not very good yeah. at ah. talking to women. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Martha, do you do you think you've got a, a good uh, good uh, a relationship here, or, or do you think uh, I should go in and say something? Ellie. Miss, uh, Mrs. Beaufort seems to have a kind heart and seems to want us to be well. So if they have the ability to help us, I can only imagine that they would want to. Even Clifford? Uh, we yeah. don't have to bring him up. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> okay. let's, let's not push it. Oh, we can yeah. promise that if, if the coyotes appear, we will offer him first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Me and Martha are going to be so tight after this. <laughs> such, such good friends. <laughs> so I guess we go and uh, once again invade their privacy and just kind of uh, ask them and say, you know. They're both standing around the, the pickup. Oh. oh, go on then, Martha. Um, hmm. We've been thinking about what you said in terms of our safety and the conditions by the quarry and uh, we were wondering whether you had any uh, protection for us that we might perhaps be able to uh, borrow for this uh, mission the Please. two of them look at each other um, and then like uh, Ellie makes a little shake of her head, and then Carter turns back and says, "I'm, I'm really sorry. I'd, I'd love to help you out, but we, we can give you a lift. We can let, take you back to town. We can take you up to the quarry for sure. But I'm sorry, we just can't, we can't loan you anything because we need to take it. We, we just got enough from this farm to buy a little place up north, but that, that's all we can do. I'm afraid. Oh, no spare shotguns." Perhaps oh. a shotgun that is I'm, I'm malfunctioning. Sorry, I, don't, I don't even own a shotgun. Oh, uh, what about a, a hammer or a, or a wrench? Mm. There. I mean, I can I can give you a hammer. Oh, that's. I, I, I'm I'm sorry. Why do you what 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 is a hammer going to do against a coyote? Oh, we don't only just shot at them. Uh, but if a so, coyote's uh, trying to nip me on the on the knee, there, I'm gonna. Gonna have a better chance you've if I not, got a hammer. You've not Could lived we... in in a rural area much, have you, there, Howard? Oh no. no we no, no, could no. Uh, could we potentially borrow some of your uh, best rocks of the area, <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps a, a burlap sack. <laughs> uh, if you are looking to make yourselves weapons. <laughs> There's nothing particularly here, uh, but give me a luck roll, a grip luck roll, which I think is going to be... 50. Yep. Yeah. That is a 29. It's almost oh. a hard success. Um, Carter says, there might be something at the Fisk farm. I think it's mostly abandoned. Oh. I could run you out there, but... Then you'd be on your own. Uh, oh, so it's uh, go to the Fisk farm, uh, 
or go to the quarry? Is that what we're hearing here? Could we make a quick stop on the way? So the Fisk Farm is most of the way to the quarry. So if you went to the Fisk Farm, it wouldn't be too hard to walk the last mile. Looking at the map, the Fisk Farm is closer to the farm than it is to the quarry. (laughs) Not anymore! (laughs) God, okay, that's, just uh, checking. That's quite some navigation Don't let you got a good there. map get in the way of a good narrative. Uh, okay, because earlier you said we should pay attention to the map, and now it's. Just... I, I do love <laughs> oh, yeah. magic. Phaedra, map. don't you dare use my words against me. <laughs> no, look, if uh, Martha, if you look at the map there, it, uh, just under where it says uh, gas lighting is allowed, there, there it is. <laughs> Fisk Farm, right there. <laughs> you see, you see, it's moved. Oh, uh, it's this. It's a new type of moving farm. They put it on wheels, oh, and yeah. then it moves with the wind. And yeah. thankfully, the wind is on our side because we passed that grip lag roll. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna turn uh, to uh, see uh, where the actual farm is on the actual map. Let's see how bad up on this. <laughs> I'll turn directly to to Ellie and uh, Carter and say thank you. The the bride this farm would be appreciated. For, I think. I think mm. that would be great. Did uh, my constitution roll earlier didn't have anything to do with like inhaling sand or anything? It wouldn't be helpful to get some makeshift face masks or something. Uh, you probably all have some kind of face mask over your face when you're walking, okay. just like a kerchief or something, because it's that sort of weather and that sort okay. of time period. Um, no, a I was I was just going to use it as a driver to have you want to go inside. Um, cool. Yeah, I, I, I need to look after yourself. Depending on your approach to the Beauforts. Clifford, Ellie makes a sound towards you, which is best described as a harumph. Oh. Before heading back in to sort of some final things. And the three of you pile into the back of the pickup truck as um, Carter gets it rolling and starts driving the three of you towards the Fisk farm. And something funny happens because so far it's been a fairly dry, horrendous dust storm all around you. But as you start approaching the Fisk Farm, the weather changes. Mm. Where there was sun in the sky, there is now a little bit more darkness and mists hearing. And there's a taste of water in the air but there's something off about that taste it's it's brackish and rotten it's not a, a smell that any of you really associate with well this part of the world and as you sort of drive up um carter pulls up the car turns around and says look i'm the fisk farm's about a uh, Another hundred yards down there. I'm not going to go no farther. The, the fists always freak me out, but they're mostly gone, to my knowledge at least, and um, they might have something left. Uh, the place is abandoned. They're a wreck. They're crappy neighbors, but <laughs> I wish you all luck. Oh, uh, uh, Carter, you, uh, you, you told me a little uh, tale about uh, being freaked out. Is it... Uh... Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, look, there, if, okay. if you're looking for, like, supplies, well, we can't give you ours, but the Fist Farm is abandoned. No one's going to mind if you take something from them. Maybe you can find what you need there. Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, thank you. A- and you, Ellie. Ellie's, Ellie's uh, back at the farm, so the two. She, yeah. Carter now turns around and heads back towards the <clears throat> Beaufort Farm. Ah, and the three of you are standing outside this. Yeah, this um, this misty, damp, rotten area. Mm. Can I check my wristwatch and see what time it is? It's uh, uh three thirty, three forty-five. Okay. And how long would it take us to walk from? Here to the quarry. Uh, it's less than an hour. You're pretty much okay. you're you're you feel like you're you're bang on time. Oh, well, uh, I Better guess we fast. go in. 
Yeah, better be fast. Quite Martha, absolutely. Uh, do we uh, do we go around together, or uh, what do you think? Do we uh, split up and cover more ground? I hate to say it, but I think we split up. I think we need to find a vehicle and then see if there's anybody around. And if there's not anybody around, we salvage what we can. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> uh, there's two main buildings here. There's an old farmhouse, which looks unsurprisingly dilapidated, and an old barn. Which again is uh, well, the roof's caved in. It's in an absolute mess. Oh, well, uh, I would suggest uh, that two people go into the old farmhouse. Lots more to see, uh, more rooms and things, and then uh, one person uh, perhaps goes into the barn. I think I'll go check out the barn. Uh, I have not had much luck okay. with other people today, so in case somebody is here, oh. I'll leave that to you all. Okay. Oh, I am very good at talking to people I'm discovering today. <laughs> so that is good. <laughs> well, uh, if anybody needs anything, I guess just uh, just holler. Okay. And uh, let's, let's, let's go. what happens in the barn first, because it should be a fairly simple search. Bridget, can I get a luck roll from you as you look around <laughs> looking for anything of value? Yeah. Excellent. Lord. It could be threatening in one of two ways. It's a very simple search. 80, 81 over 57. Failure. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The, this has not been a great session for uh, rolling well. Uh, would, it, would it behoove us for me to spend... I can't spend no. luck on a luck roll. Never mind. It's a lot of luck on a luck roll. <clears throat> Here's what I'll give you. You find a broken pitchfork. but. Beautiful. You've also got some time, and you're trying to figure out the smell. The smell is bugging you. So give me, give me a natural world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will go well. Mm -hmm. Thirty-two over ten. That's a that's a failure. You've spent a lot of time traveling, and the smell you're getting is one that's not from here. Like that much, your your nose is telling you. But you can't tell where it's from. It's like, it's like, you're not, it's, there is something in your memory that reminds you of the smell that this place is giving off, but you can't quite place it right now, and you don't know why. Okay. Can I, like, if I were to, would I be able to describe the smell? Yeah. Like how would I describe it to someone? Um, the smell is, well, first of all, it's, it's damp, which is odd. Mm-hmm. And you're getting, everything is rotting, but it's sort of, again, it's a damp rot rather than the dry rot you would often see in this part of the world. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, which is much more dangerous than you need to check for. And the thing is, there's also a smell which you might describe as rotting eggs, but it's not quite so bad. It's like this mild smell of dead organics but let's mm. move into the farmhouse yep. and um yeah this as you kind of walk into this building um how are the two of you approaching this who's leading i think i'd like to have a look around really quickly before going in so i'm happy to let howard go in first okay then Oh yeah, I'll be leading the way. So, Hubbard, as you walk into this room, um, it is, first of all, a completely destroyed mess. Uh, it looks something closer to a nest than it does to a house. Uh, there was furniture here, but it's mostly been destroyed. There were things here, but they're now mostly scattered all over the place. And there's straw on the ground. And actually... As you look up, there is someone scrambling around on all fours inside this house. And he appears to be gathering up the various bits and pieces that are spread everywhere. And as you turn and he looks at you, you come across the horrendous visage of one of those two twins, one of the Fisks, but his mask is down and his face is a horrible contorted thing, unlike anything you have ever seen. Can I have a sanity roll? Indeed. 
Oh, a 31 under 40. With two large, unblinking eyes. Which, and because you've been warned about them in advance, they don't throw you quite as much as they maybe would have. But what then happens is he looks up and with an inhuman speed dives towards you uh, with what look like almost like claw-like appendages outstretched towards you. So he's attacking you. Would you like to try and dodge out the way or fight back? Sorry about that, Howard. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Thanks, Martha. I think I'm going to dodge. Okay. He has a a regular success. We need a regular success or better. I got myself a seven under 40. So as this guy attacks you, you manage basically to pull back. Do you want to pull the door closed again or do you want to let him go flying past you? I'm going to let him go flying past me and I'm going to scream. Martha! Martha! I don't have any weapons on me. I'm not sure what you want. (laughs) Martha, give me a dexterity roll to see if you have the ability to act before this guy comes slashing at you. Uh, Okay, then. You threw him at me. Uh, that is an 82 over 55, so I do not. Uh, that was a big surprise for okay, me. Okay, he's coming at you with a uh, fighting brawl. What are you going to do? Uh, let's see what we got. I think it's going to have to be a dodge, although not very strong skill for me. Um, yeah. Just going to try and move out of the way. And that is a 97, which out of 28 is, in fact, uh, a fumble. A fumble? Yeah, because if you yeah, have lower than 50 yeah. in your skill... Um, <laughs> oh dear, sorry Martha. Martha, um, you take a long slash across your face as these... So, they're kind of claws, but they're also kind of fingernails. They're sort of a half-transformed thing as this horrifying visage comes into play and just before you can even respond or react because what happened was when he shouted Martha you looked through the window towards him and you didn't look to your side as this thing came in and slashed across your face uh, for a full six hit points worth of damage ow that is a major wound okay do you want to give Um, me a constitution roll oh I'd love to thanks for asking Okay, that is a 90, so uh, and you <laughs> Martha fall... stares for a second, blinks, and then just... Yeah, so you yeah. actually collapse into this window, uh, unconscious, as uh, this uh, creature just barrels pushing past you and just screeches off into the night. Um, a few seconds later, um, Butchel, you hear the sound of an engine firing, and it sounds like a tr- uh, like some kind of truck and driving off away from you guys, wherever you were. And uh, yes, you were, Howard, looking at the unconscious body of Martha flopping down at a window. Oh, Martha, Martha! I'll run down and kind of like, uh, just try and hold her up a bit, not so she's lying on the floor, then just gently tapping her face. Martha! Oh, come on now. Uh, Please don't touch my face. <laughs> oh, don't. I won't. Martha, Martha, you can't say that. You're unconscious. Ah, uh, Martha wouldn't like me touching her face. I know that about Martha. I'll, I'll tap you her on the shoulder. You hear that in your head. Yeah, yeah don't shot on the shoulder now. Here, Martha. I think she's fine with the shoulder. Okay. Okay, do you want to try and um, tend her wounds I, to some degree? Yeah, I think so. First aid, it's is it? First aid roll, yeah. Would I have heard... Is this a bucket of water in the face or something? At this oh, time? I... 57 over 30. Start All tapping right. her in the face again. <laughs> <laughs> Would I have heard Howard's initial yell from Martha? Yeah, I'm going to I'm now going to let you come into the scene Clifford. You you appear with your with your bite-sized pitchfork, your half-sized hit pitchfork. <laughs> uh and you see Martha with a big basically a messy muddy 
bloody face lying unconscious and uh, Howard is attempting to provide first aid but is not doing a great job and is just covered in blood himself. So there was a, a backfire as well. So I guess uh, I'm going to leave the barn and head towards them while looking for the source of the backfiring. So the sound of the van is actually making its way away from all of you, and it seems to be heading north. Oh, okay. Uh, then, yeah, I would get down on the ground next to Martha and, and see what I could help do. Okay. Oh. I guess first aid? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's yeah. going to happen is it's going to take Martha a little bit of time to regain consciousness and she's not going to be able to um, do anything more in this scene here before you guys need to go. But the threat is now gone so you can probably look inside the house and the two of you can finish up anything oh. here. But uh, we're going to get Martha back involved in the next scene because right now she is Martha. unconscious. I'm just going to put my, uh, my, my coat here under your head. And just, you just lie there. In fact, you know what's going to happen is that Martha is going to regain consciousness and she is going to tend to her own wounds because she is a farmer. <laughs> and she's going to deal with herself and not let the two of you touch her. It's just going to take a while. Oh. Martha, we, uh, we uh, Clifford and I are just going to... Uh... Yo, see see what's here in the house. You're talking to still passed out. Yeah, Martha, she's not right? really Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Uh, you just stay <laughs> here, Martha. Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll go and have a uh, Cl Clifford. Uh, uh, I'll um, I'll go. Uh, where, so where was I? Sorry, uh, keeper, was I upstairs? When no, you just downstairs? walked into the main room. Just there is in. there is more to explore in there, but basically the main room is a big nest. And you'd gotten as far as that nest, and he, had the, the creature, whatever it was, had been collecting things in that nest. But uh, yes, he attacked you, and then he attacked Martha, and then he ran off. Uh, so uh, Clifford, I am I'm not a, a coward, but I think uh, perhaps we should uh, go together. Uh, Martha, are you going to be okay out here? Martha, you can regain oh, consciousness be... at this point in time, but you're just not able to do anything. Cool. Thanks. I think I, I, I think I would leave the pitchfork with her just in case. Martha, you now have Palmer. half a pitchfork. <laughs> that is so, uh, so good. It's the more know. useful Thank half you. of the pitchfork, is what we're saying. Like, <laughs> okay. it's the spiky bit. Yeah, I can use it. Yeah, to it's just there's like, like there's less than one <laughs> foot of handle, <laughs> Tw twenty-five centimeters worth of. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Then I think. I think Howard and I would go inside, try to scrounge up what we could as quickly as possible. And look at this nest and look at, you know, what, 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 you, well, I suppose just look at it first and see what there is to see about yeah. it. Um, Does the smell get stronger inside? Not particularly. The smells inside are one of human waste and unwashed bodies and mm, something slightly salty yeah which is odd and unusual for the space and just generally unpleasant it's it stinks in here but it's not the same it's as that smell that you can't quite place So you want to know about this nest. Uh, actually, yeah, so why don't we have you, Howard, uh, pick up a postcard that you find on the ground. It's dated from 1925, which is about 10 years ago. And this postcard is... Well, why don't you describe it, Howard? Oh, this... Uh, Clifford, have you, you see this? Uh, got uh, t two, uh, two boys. Uh, they're both, uh, wearing loose clothing there and they, they've got their flat caps on, but, uh, oh yeah, it's the eyes, you know? Yeah. Uh, you see the eyes, the big, wide, wide eyes, wider than usual, uh, bags under their eyes as well. Would you say they're bulging there, Clifford? Uh, I would say if the eyes are the window to the soul, those, those, those windows need a lot of cleaning. Uh, oh yeah. 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 See what you did there. That's right. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Hey, Clifford you think uh, is this J- Jonas and Jaw? Would you think? Oh, they they were brothers. Didn't, didn't uh, Reverend Xavier tell us they were brothers? They did. Uh, God, that's a that's very possible. Yeah. Oh, and this is 1925. That's uh, ten years, ten years ago, ago now. Sure. I mean that that tracks. Oh. I wonder if there's other. Are there other pictures? Anything around? There's an awful the lot of um, things around, but generally the thing about this place is that it's just a mess. Uh, it looks like so. There's there's actually uh, no. You know what? For this information, I feel like uh, we need a spot hidden from the two of you. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, here we go. Oh. Three under thirty extreme. Oh, I didn't get this that. is. I got a. This is again because the thing is, Clifford. It comes back to a thing that you can do, and it comes back to this this thing that is clearly an ability of yours because you had the same ability in the church, which is that you can sort of tell the story of what's happened here, because yeah, there was a sort of a nest like thing in the middle of the room, and actually that looks like it's been built into the farmhouse, but it did look quite neat. So whatever was living here originally, sure, it's a little bit odd to have like this this blanket bed thing on the ground where someone's curled up, but it's not that unusual if someone didn't have a bed. It's just like a comfy little thing that someone was had on the ground. You can imagine someone living there, but clearly someone else has come in since then and has disturbed the place. People have been here who aren't the normal occupants who've made it even worse. And you think a group of people probably spent the night here recently or used it recently and they were not the normal occupants. And so when that... So you heard the story from Howard. You heard the story of this creature scrabbling around trying to find things. Probably those things were originally stored quite well, but it was trying to remake its... its home, you guess? Maybe that... Maybe this is the home of that creature. And we disturbed it in its home. Yeah, this kind of tracks with... I haven't had a chance to tell you or Martha yet, Howard, but... I got Martha, yeah. you can be in if, this conversation if you like. I, I don't know if either of you picked up on it, but I don't think the priest was actually a priest. Um... Yeah, something about the situation just got me a little itchy, and uh, yeah, I, I've met a lot of priests uh, in my line of work, and he did not feel like one, and there were also a bunch of weird symbols everywhere inside the church, uh, oh. not biblical in nature or Christian in nature, but they were there, they were prevalent kind of scattered about but he was wearing his uh his dog collar <laughs> he was uh but collar doesn't make a priest any more than you know knowing how to fix a car means you can fix a car oh yeah i suppose that's that's yeah i suppose why would oh. they send us to a non-priest then she says, hey, Martha just walks in with this blood dripping from her face. So oh. What is happening? Who is everyone? And what happened to my face? Ah, uh, well, uh, there was the, uh, we came in here and uh, we, 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 we walked through and uh, there was this, this nest. And then that thing uh, came running. And I tried to defend you, Martha. I tried. Uh, but you it, did, uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. I uh, ran past me, got past me. Um, don't know how. And then it banged your head. And it's at this point in time. There saying it's at this point in time. Howard like smacks on uh, uh, one of the cupboards, and the door falls open, and a corpse just falls out at all three of your feet. Can I get a sanity roll from the three of you, please? Absolutely. Any roll, huh? 87 over 60. Oh, that is... Failure. An extreme success with 5 over 50. 96 over 40. I'll take 96 over 40. Is that a fumble? Yep. 
Yep. Yep. So I'll take four from you, Howard. I'll take a D4 from Martha. And Clifford, it's, it's nothing. Is that oh, right? Wow. Uh, no. No, I sorry. Uh, my I... apologies. Uh, if you pass, yeah, should... it's nothing. If it, you failed, it's a D4. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was an extreme success. No, no, Howard, you so. just lost four. Oh, right. I don't, I don't, you, there's you, nothing. You, there's no extra roll on top of that. You fumbled, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, I'm loving this accent because it's it's yeah. trying to be Canadian, but occasionally just becomes Welsh. Uh, it's far oh, north. no. Tracks all accents. Tracks all the accents. Uh, I think you'll find there's uh, seven or eight in here. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, so Newman, I know that you like being the keeper, but I'm the keeper in this game, which means I'm the one who plays oh. lots of different characters. You're meant to keep to one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and do that from now on, keeper. I promise I will now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and yeah, there's a dead body at your feet, and you have no idea why. Having been in certain environments, are are there any like obvious stab wounds gun wound anything like that yes this man was definitely um strangled to death uh there's quite an obvious uh demonstration of bruising all around his neck uh it's fairly um pronounced and he's probably been dead less than 24 hours because rigor mortis hasn't set in yet he's floppy oh wow do we uh, recognize uh, this this man? Nope. Or could we uh, see if he has any identification on him? Ooh, I'll take a luck roll, but it'll be hard. Oh. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's uh, 85 over 75. He has no, uh, no identification luck. on him. Or if he did have identification on him, it has been taken away. Oh, so uh, he's been strangled, yeah? Yeah. By whatever did this to me. Um, Martha will look around, see if there's anything she can use to kind of tidy up her face a bit, like a cloth she can wet or something so like that. So the thing is, everything yeah. you find is sort of moldy and mildewy and horrible. Yeah. There's, you're, 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 you can't find clean water, so your options are very limited in that regard. Can I still try a first aid with a nothing? first aid <laughs> on your own face? Yeah. Um, sure. Can I hold up hold up a mirror or something? Um, <laughs> if it so, what I'll say though is, if this first aid uh, fumbles, it will do a lot of damage to you because you'll basically give yourself a long term infection. Oh. All right. Well, I'm not counting on a fumble. It's likely, but, you know. No, I rolled an 18 over 35. No, 35, yes. Okay. So, so, yeah, you, you clean yourself up. You've, you've got this major wound, uh, which puts you at real risk moving forward. But um, mm-hmm. you are up, you're alive, you've regained one hit point, and you are at least semi-clean, although there is an open wound on your face, which is ugly and horrible. I'm going to give yeah, her my, I mean... my kerchief. So she <laughs> yeah. Can, she Thank you. An extra one to kind of keep it like pressed up against the wound because it's clean and there's nothing else here that is. So, yeah. And I suppose the three of you are probably heading out of this place. There's nothing else to find here, really. You complete your search. I would love to be gone. It's gone four o'clock and you probably need to be making your way to the quarry. Yep. And as the three of you walk off from this old, broken, destroyed farm, as you get further and further away, the air changes once more. That misty, broken, brackish smell begins to fade away, and you return once more to the full force of this dust storm that is just everywhere around you. The faint sun in the sky is the only thing keeping you right as the three of you make your way through the dust storm towards the quarry. 
And again, you find your way back onto that road. And I'm going to ask for another round of dex, no, another round of constitution rolls in this horrible dusty weather to determine if you get there just before or just after 5 p.m. Oh, 12. Over. That's a six. 12 under 60. Excellent. So. 97 over 60. So, 97 over 60. Yeah. Yeah, so not yeah. a not a fumble. Okay, so with two successes, no, you're going to get there just before 5 p.m., but yes, uh, we're going to just have um, Clifford be just a little bit behind. So it's the, the other two that are going to make their way to the quarry first, and basically you note that Clifford's somewhere behind, but you can just about see him, and he's just dealing with a few things he kind of gets here. But it's the two of you that are going to make a listen roll right now. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, Martha failed with a 78 over 45. Uh, Howard got a 20 under 45. So the two of you can just about make out some voices coming from the quarry who appear to be having a fairly heated argument, one might say. But, um, whereas Martha, you don't really recognize what's going on apart from both voices are male. Um, Howard, you're fairly certain that one of the voices is the father, Father Savior, because you remember it's the same voice and you can just about thinking. So clearly, for whatever reason, Xavier is in the quarry. Oh, but father? Oh, uh, fa- Father Xavier! And as the three of you kind of come round, um, there's a little alleyway that leads up into the quarry. You kind of go around, you get a viewpoint. You see there's a man sitting in a chair. The dust storm has sort of settled a little bit around it, so it's a bit nicer here. Uh, not as much dust gets in because it's deep into the quarry. And give me a spot hidden, Howard. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, 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 I rolled a 48 over a 25. That's a fail. Weirdly, you don't see Xavier around. Um, so this quarry is kind of interesting. Basically, as you come in, there's a small dip down into this quarried out area. But actually, on one side of the quarry is this large fissure. It's just like an opening in the rock which seems to go deeper. And then parked just beside that fissure is this uh, big old truck full of loads of stuff. It's much bigger than the the trucks you've seen so far. Um, And it's at the far end of the quarry. And in the closer end to you, who appears to be waiting for you, is a man sitting on a chair surrounded by what looks to be some kind of scientific equipment, although it's all fallen over and it looks a little bit damaged. And he goes, Yeah, here, you'll be the... uh, You'll be the crew, the WPA crew, that right? Oh yeah, that's us, yeah. How are you doing there? Yeah, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. I, uh, I drew the short straw, so I gotta wait for y'all. Y'all get all your jobs done. Oh yeah, I think we, uh, we covered everything we need to cover. We, we got one more just coming up now. And I think, Clifford, are you gonna kind of come around at that point? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, this is Martha, uh, this is Clifford, I, I'm Howard, and you are? Oh, uh, hey, I am Clark DeVoir. Oh. And there's a slightly odd-looking man named Clark with a thin moustache sitting on this slightly broken deck chair, watching the three of you, looking pretty relaxed. Seems mm. to be chewing something. Yeah, all right, well, um... Boss man, he uh, he said you were gonna do the the measurements. Uh, yes, sir. We're also, we're also here to take some samples. Yeah, he said y'all gotta go into the fisher, and he'd meet you in there, and uh, then we can get the hell out of Dodge. Is he here? Yeah, he's. 
in the fissure or something. <clears throat> Do we smell any of and that kind of decay from previous? No, not, a, not here now. Okay. Uh, Howard, did you. Did I mishear you earlier? Did you say Father Xavier? Did oh, you. Oh, yeah, I. I thought I saw him on the on the ridge. Uh, not on the ridge, just just over there, you know. Uh, the priest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. He um. Uh, he's with the uh, the boss, her, and the fisher. Oh. Yeah. 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 Ah. Uh, yeah. We we spoke to both of them before before we came up here, and uh, they are working together on this on this fisher. Why why does the priest sampling? Um, I don't really know. Um, oh, I just was told to send you at the fisher. Oh. Um. Maybe that's yeah. where we're supposed to take samples from. Yes. Um, this here all here is the equipment. He kind of points at the various sort of broken-looking equipment around him. Oh, okay. Uh, For any of you with any knowledge on the subject, because I don't think any of the three of you are, they might be soil samplers. They look like they could <laughs> dig into the soil somehow. Um... um. Well, I guess I'm my skills list. I'm gonna pick some of it up. I don't know what it does, but if it's what we need, I'll grab some of the equipment. Yeah, I'll, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Howard for, for, follows Clifford. Just kind of follows his lead. Big smile on his face as usual. Uh, just kind of constantly nodding at this chap, Clark. Um, is there anywhere um around here that has running water? I'd love to. Clean my face before I. Well, yeah, someone really done a number on you, eh? Uh, yes, someone. Well, mm -hmm. I reckon if you wait about two hours, you'll have all the water you need. That is um, a funny joke, <laughs> but uh, yeah. In answer to my question. No, I don't. I don't think so. Sorry. Oh. Have, how long have you been here today? Uh, about two hours, and we got to get out of here in about one, so... And you don't have any water on you, or... I mean, I got a canteen, anything. but, uh... You know, we're on water. Okay. Okay, so Clifford, mm -hmm. you've headed off to the fisher? Uh, yeah, I would say that, I mean, I would have waited for my compatriots. No worries. You seem yeah. to be sort of, uh, sniffing around. Do you want to do a psychology on this guy, Phaedra? Because he's definitely, uh, he's not being particularly <laughs> friendly to you. Yeah, Martha assumes that all people are like this. Okay. But, uh, let's, let's try, uh, we have a 10 base of psychology. Okay. Oh my god, I just rolled a six! <gasps> <laughs> Martha. I did not expect that. She was she studied here. She just stared at him like full eye contact for yeah, about three so minutes. <laughs> there's something in the way that his eyes are darting leaves you with the impression that he's he seems worried you're not going to go into the fissure and he's like he's anxious about that and it's clear because his eyes are darting to the fissure, then back to you. He seems calm on the surface, but there's clear worry going on. There's more going on than it seems. And, yeah, he's not being completely straight with you. Um, well, uh, we have been travelling for five hours now, and uh, I have not used a restroom, so if there's any big bushes or something, I would appreciate some direction 
And if there's no running water, that is fair he enough. He looks around the quarry, which definitively does not have any <laughs> bushes in it. Why do people... How have you... I... How do people work here? <laughs> He gives you a big, big smirk, like a really slightly dirty smirk. I'll go behind your car. Where is it? The van <laughs> is uh, near the fissure on the other side of the quarry. Oh. Huh. Well. Okay. And actually, yeah, why don't we kind of make the three of you head that way now? Because I feel like that's where the story is going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this van is the same van that was outside of Jim Burr's office at the start of the story. You recognise it. Uh, It's much bigger than the ones you've seen so far. And this is probably your ride out of here. But uh, Clifford, you're kind of getting all of this stuff into the fissure and you're in the fissure mouth, uh, as is Howard. But Martha, you kind of sneak behind this thing to do your business. And... (laughs) When you come out, you notice that there's some blood on the ground. Just a little bit, like a drop of blood. And actually, um, the blood is leading a couple of drops, very little. You you almost wouldn't notice it leading up into this fissure. There's not a lot, but you, you know, but actually the reason you spotted it is you worried it was yours. You thought you were bleeding again. But no, this is a little Mm. older. Probably be, it's um, dried up a little bit. Not that old, but yeah, it's there's some blood on the ground. Might still be my blood. <laughs> but it's heading towards the um, fissure and you've not been there yet. No. Can I... I don't know this is too weird. <laughs> um, I'd like to kind of say something to the others that would get them to come and talk to me about something but also not make that be very obvious about anything so I think I'll be like hmm oh well will you look at this right over here that's uh I'll have you is this a fossil of some sort Uh, I'll let you do this as a stealth (laughs) roll to not rouse um (laughs) divorce um suspicions Let's give it a go. I appreciate that. That's very generous to not make it a fast talk or something. Oh, well, I rolled a 99. (laughs) So anything social. Uh, 99 out of 40. So there's a fumble again. Two fumbles. You're welcome, everyone. Here's how I'm going to make that play out. (laughs) Um, Howard and Clifford are already in the fissure. And we're being very polite gentlemen and we're not paying attention to you because you said you were going to go to the loo. (laughs) Whereas uh, behind you is standing that man, Clark DeVoe. Yeah. Watching me pee? No, no, you're you're stood up. You're now trying to attract the attention of the others. Okay. And he says... (laughs) Just check. And he's... (laughs) Clark DeVoe, let's be very clear about this. Clark DeVoe is clearly some kind of evil bastard. He's not a pervert. Come on. <laughs> no. No, we've cleared that up. Uh, <laughs> he goes, he's now standing slightly disturbingly close to you. And he goes, you're not in the fissure. Just get in the fissure. Um, now. I just was wondering if... Now. Uh, this is a fossil of... I don't care about no fossils. Get in the fissure. Come on. Uh, he's kind of scary, so she's going to slowly walk to the fissure. Her eyes wide open, so if at any point they meet Howard uh, or uh, Clifford's eyes, they will seem very alarmed. Um... Yeah, no, as you kind of go in, the kind of within the fissure, there's a whole bunch of like equipment set up, as well as, and this is weird, a whole bunch of coffins. Mm. But all the coffins are now open and they appear to be mostly full of sawdust and straw. 
And as the two of you kind of walk in there with your equipment, a little bit unsure what to do, you're sort of looking around at this room and you're like, what the... And a very confused and slightly disturbed Martha kind of walks in as well. And Martha, you're following this faint trail of blood, which leads into the fissure, into this bunch of piles of abandoned stuff, and seems to lead in and further down. And you're obviously pretty freaked out. But Clark is now standing at the entrance to the fissure, and you've sort of moved in now. It's getting a little bit dark in here, but you can still see his shadow at the entrance watching the three of you. And we can all see the coffins. Yeah. Can you all see the blood? Uh, yeah, once you point it out to them, it's fairly obvious. Okay. Are people observing us, though, wouldn't be like, oh, hey, look, there's blood. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> With my eyes, maybe. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Clifford's senses would be up. I think he would be on constant alert at this point, like, Martha's been injured, weird shit's been happening, the priest is not a priest, the, the vibe is off with everything, so I think he is looking for anything out of place, and he's constantly scanning the fissure as the deeper they go in. There's a lot of things out of place. There's the coffins, there's the straw, mm. there's the blood-stained path leading in, and it looks like there's another... Small cave, not too far, that opens up again ahead of you. Um, <clears throat> if I were to examine one of the coffins, would would uh, Clark have visibility on me doing that? No, you're deep enough in that he wouldn't have that visibility. I'd like to okay. put the equipment down and kind of rummage through one of the coffins to see what this is all about. Yeah, no worries. Um... I guess it's a spot hidden. Yeah, I guess it's a spot hidden, but you'll get something even if you fail. Okay. Six under 30 for an extreme. First of all, <clears throat> these are definitely the coffins that you were helping load the Fisk boys with earlier. It's just, you just know it's the same coffins. Like, there's a number of marks and scratches and colors that you remember. These are the same coffins. Secondly, at the time, you were confused because Martha seemed to be having a really, really easy time of it, as was Howard. And now that you're looking in, there's no dead bodies in here, nor is there any organic matter whatsoever. You're not convinced that these coffins contained human bodies. In fact, you think they probably contained something else. I'd guess mm -hmm. something that was being snuck into these caves. Okay. I will convey this to to both of them. Uh, yeah, I think Howard's probably watching Clifford with like wide open mouth, just kind of seeing him rummaging coffins. I mean, they're filled with weird stuff. Like my curiosity is going to get the best of me, man. Like I've done a little smuggling, and this is kind of similar. I think. Oh. I don't. I don't know okay. what's going on. So I, eyes up, I guess. Yeah, so um, no no bodies. Mm -hmm. No. What you 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 think they were you you said you think you they were bringing something in here? Uh it, Yeah. What what it, what what are they bringing in here? Not human bodies. It's hard to tell. I I can't think of a single thing that might make sense out here. I, I don't know. What about the fresh blood? Oh. Yeah. Well, that's got to come from somewhere now, doesn't it? Yeah. I've been through a lot today, so um, oh, yeah. I might be a bit too paranoid, but um, my heart is telling me that we're being um, s s sent to our deaths oh. with this mission. Now, I, I might be wrong. I hope I am. Oh, yeah. I don't know if... The new irrigation equipment for my farm is worth my life. So I'd like to get out of here rather than further in personally. Oh, what do we want to do? Uh, I suppose that's a good question. Yeah, three, three of us and uh, just uh, 
Just that Clark fella. And uh, the priest yep. and, and Mr. Jim. Fair. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. And the two yeah. uh, strange boys. But what, what if we've, uh, what if we do have this wrong now? Uh, we, we, we don't end up getting a lift out of here. Uh, maybe, maybe we should see, uh, in the fissure. Maybe Mr. Jim, uh, is there and then the Reverend is there, but maybe we, 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 we just check, you know? Do you want to give me a, a listen roll, actually? Is that all of us or just Howard? Just give it Howard for the, Howard for the moment. Yeah. That'd be a 26. Under a 45. There are voices that appear to be coming from deeper in the tunnels. And it's difficult to, like, before you were like, yeah, that's Father Xavier for sure. It's way harder to tell now because they're echoing all over the place and stuff. But yeah, no, there's, there's people in, there's people in here. You feel confident that there's people in here. Martha, Clifford, I, you hear that? that you, you listen now and you can hear them voices. Let me... Yes? Let me propose something. Let's say we sneak into the fissure a little bit, gauge what's going on, and then if it's something too hairy for us, we head back out, steal the truck, we leave. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. It's only... Uh... Clark, for now, mm-hmm. if we draw attention to ourselves, we might be uh, outnumbered. Yeah. Mm. And he's just one man with it's the three of us. We have no idea how many people are down there. So, better careful. Do it on the hush hush. Yeah. Cool. So, are you going to make a sort of stealthy entrance into the next room? I think we should. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So there's nobody in the next room, so I'm going to just let you all sneak quietly into this room, but feel it has happened quietly and carefully. Don't worry about that. And as you come into this room, it feels familiar to the three of you because there are elements of it similar to the farm that you were at before, the Fisk farm, in that there are these odd nests made of um straw and there's a couple of them that have been built and yeah they're for one thing they're a lot better maintained for a second thing there's all sorts of bric-a-brac surrounding them lots of different bits and pieces and uh there's also a whole lot of symbols and structures and scratches and they all look quite childlike drawn on the walls around these two symbols and this tunnel goes deeper yet but this is this is now out of the light completely so it's quite dark in here and there's these little places and um, I think probably at least one of you has some kind of light on you so you can still see into it as you go deeper but yeah you found what appears to be a nest oh Hey, this is like uh, this is like uh, what we saw at the Fisk Farm. Yep. Um. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. What do we think? Do we want to try to press on? Well, that was the plan. Ah, uh, but all the nesting worries me about the number of yeah things we might be facing. Yeah, I think pushing forward still stealthily the right move. Oh, yeah. Okay. As you move deeper into these tunnels, um, the voices do get louder. There seems to be noises coming. There were human noises, like voices and people talking, but as you kind of get deeper in here, those voices get odder and there's like a scream and then there's some slightly more aggressive noises which are difficult for you to figure out exactly what they are. But can I get all three of you give me stealth rolls to determine just how well this goes? Uh, 
I'm gonna. That's a twenty-eight over forty. So I got a sixty-three. Good matter. 63 over 40. I'm going to spend 23 points. Hmm. Hey, big good, spender. Good point to do that. <clears throat> I rolled a 74 over 20. Okay. Is everybody else using luck? So, you've got two I successes passed. out of three, so this is mostly going to go your way. Okay. <laughs> uh, but when you enter this next room, you witness, I mean, this is a fairly gruesome scene. So the first thing you see is three giant fish-like monsters, each of which is about nine foot tall. And what they are doing is they are engaged in a bloodied frenzy as they tear the human corpse of what used to be Jim Burr to shreds and are eating it in the corner. The man that you know as Father Xavier is in the corner of this room, curled up into a ball, screaming and begging them to stop, pitting, uh, there's just tears rolling down his eyes. Can you all make me sanity rolls, please? Well, this is not what I expected. Nope. That's oh. a pass. 80, 84 over 58. Fail. Pass for me, 22 under Okay, it's 36. one for those who pass and a d6 for failure. So that's a four sand loss for Pucho and Clifford, and the other two pass. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's... Uh, it's Clifford who uh, rolls backwards, terrified by the sight in front of him, but still manages to mostly uh, keep his um, cool. But it's absolutely terrified by the sight in front of him. But it's Howard's little... <gasps> that makes one of those creatures look up suddenly and look towards the three of you, where you're mostly hidden. But it's those eyes. Those eyes, two large, unblinking eyes staring at the three of you, and you are trapped in that gaze for just a second. Howard, can I get a power roll? Oh. Oh, a 24 under 40. And they're terrifying, but you're not frozen. You can move. Um, and you've not been noticed. Oh, I die. Um. This is what Kara was talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. the three of you back up. But as you do, the three of you sort of like proper Scooby-Doo movement as you're all hiding from this thing. You turn... <laughs> and, you, and there is Clark DeVoe holding a pistol towards all three of you. And he goes, Up you get. Uh, okay then. Y'all gonna be sacrifices. Oh, yeah. Down you get. You either come this way, I shoot you, you go down there, maybe you got a chance. How far away is he from He us? is far enough away that he'd get a couple of good quality shots off at you before you could do anything. Yeah. Well, between a rock and a hard yep. place, aren't we? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. I think I want to do something stupid. Do something stupid. Do something stupid. We need to do something stupid. I want to throw my. I want to throw. <laughs> I think we need. I want to throw my. Knife we need to down. to confuse him to draw his attention somewhere else and then to scare him from the side. Yeah, throw your throw your yeah. knife. That'll can do we, it. Can we have a moment I, where between us, because we've already <laughs> talked about this idea, if something goes wrong, we're all going to like run for it. Can there mm -hmm. be a moment where potentially 
there's like we all a, run for it. Well, there's just a recognition that it doesn't matter whether we run, whether we throw a knife, whatever. It's, but this is the moment where something's going to happen. Yeah, this is the watershed moment. Let's yeah. just go. <laughs> no, Let's go, no, go, go. No intended. Do I still have all these rocks I saved in a bell up? Uh, no, you've from been earlier? sneaking. <laughs> 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 Didn't bring my rocks. <laughs> just dragging them across the floor. <laughs> Um, okay, if, if this is the moment where we all think we're going to go, uh, Howard is going to run at him. Uh, do we do this in the, yeah, so I think, the order? Yeah, I think one of you wants to run at him, one of you wants to throw a knife at him, and one of you wants to bolt for the door. So why don't you three if you give me your dexes in chat? Which one? Real so friend. Clifford is 85, Martha's 55, and Howard is in between, no doubt. 80, there we go. This works out perfect. Okay, so yeah. Clifford, you're going to throw the knife. Give me a throw roll as you do this. He's going to get at least one shot off before the knife does anything, but it's definitely an, an action you have the ability to do. Yep. Mm, no, that's a okay. three over three. <laughs> I, I Spend all your luck! <laughs> so he's... Can I spend luck on a? Th- is it uh, technically you can, an attack, right? You can absolutely spend luck here. You can spend luck on uh, attack. What can I'll you? say to you is that he's definitely going to get to shoot at you. But yep. if you if this is a successful roll, the quality of his shots are not going to be as good. Yeah, I gotta go for it. I gotta spend all but one. Of my luck. Yeah. <gasps> oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh no. Which means oh, his yeah. three yeah. bonus die shots are now just at point blank range are just going to be normal shots. So the first two the first one's going to be uh normal, the second one's gonna be with a penalty die, third one's gonna be with a penalty die. Okay. So he's gonna shoot you once and hit he's gonna shoot you three to shoot three shots off. And the second one is going to hit you. Uh, and you are going to take 1d8 plus 1 damage. You're going to take 8 damage as the shot shatters into uh, your chest. Uh, that's definitely going to be um, a constitution roll to see if you um, stay conscious. Oh, thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> oh, yeah. 31 under 60. Yes. Excellent. Success. Okay. Uh, at which point in time, Howard, you're going to try and um, knock this guy over. Uh, what are you going to do exactly? You've you've darted at him. Uh, I think the intention was to dart at him and perhaps try and grab his gun hand, but rather than trying to disarm him, it's grabbing his gun hand and just kind of like going straight to the floor. To, to knock him down, but also get the gun away from okay. being Okay, uh, that's going to be a fighting brawl as a maneuver, and he's going to fight back to try and get another shot off at you. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> he has a success. So all you need is a success. I, I am just out of a success. Spend your luck. I'm going to use some luck, if that's okay. Please do. Uh, so I rolled um, 46 over 30, so I'm going to use okay. 16 points of luck. And Martha, are you going to sprint out of here? Um, does Howard, how, does he look like he has the gun? Uh, Howard has managed to keep him from firing and has manoeuvred him to a position where he's not going to be able to take any shots or do anything because he's out of position. He's going to have to deal with Howard before he can do anything with anyone else. I'd love to uh, step on his arm and take the gun. Uh, yeah, you could definitely try and overpower him uh, from this point in time because Howard already has him in disadvantageous position. You would have a bonus die on your fighting brawl and he wouldn't get to respond. If you succeeded, you could take the gun. Oh, that was a failure by a lot. Even with the bonus die? 77 over 35. Oh, I forgot the bonus die. It's, it's the bonus die. Come on, bonus die. 
No, that was a seven to seven again. <laughs> Two seven to sevens. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, luckily, because he didn't get any way to respond to you, um, your efforts were pointless rather than dangerous. But here's the thing, Howard. Weird voices just begin descending in your head. And those two eyes that you saw earlier, those two eyes are in your head now. And they're telling you, they're telling you to do things, Howard. They're telling you, they're telling you to, to let go of the gun and then turn and bring your friends to your masters. Your masters. Oh, yeah. Howard, Howard. Oh, yeah. Give me a power roll. You need a hard success oh, to yeah. resist this. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that is uh, an 87 over a 40. Oh. Oh, no. Do you have uh, 67 luck? No, I have 64 luck. So close. <sighs> Howard, you have been dominated by one of the deep old ones you have changed sides in this fight and you are going to try and take martha down into this enclave and hand her to your new master oh yeah you may repeat this save if anyone interrupts the concentration of the elder thing that is trying to um to control you and or a full minute passes, which will be a couple of rounds at least. I imagine I'm still further down from the gunman at this point, having taken a major You wound. are, yeah. yes. And there's a big ass hole in your chest. Oh. What do you do about that, by the way, Clifford? Because everything's very fast and it looks <laughs> like he's about to build a shoot again because Howard has stopped fighting with him. Uh, if... If it looks like he's about to shoot again, then I would certainly try to run and add on to the dog pile, uh, assuming that Howard is still one of us. Um, so I would try to just dog pile the guy and then keep him from. So uh, yeah, because so I'll give you a fighting brawl. He will get to fight back, um, but it will just be a straight up and down fight between the two of you. I don't. I don't think I'm going to need disadvantage just because I'm so hurt, but. No, no, mm. I'm just going to let you do it, because okay. the thing is, it's a, whole, it's a whole mix of stuff. He has advantages and disadvantages right now, so I'm just going to make Fair a straight enough. roll. Uh, success. So that's a success versus a success, which means you do manage to get the gun from him. Wonderful. Um, and you manage to pull it away, uh, but he, you've not got control <laughs> of it. He still has some control of it, but the gun is now between the two of you. You're not holding it or anything like gotcha. that. And it is Howard. Oh, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, grab uh, Martha, put her arms up behind her back, and uh, try and march her uh, to, uh, to our Lord and Saviors. Howard, what the hell are cool. you doing? This is, this is fairly unexpected. So, Martha, I don't think you're going to be able to particularly well respond to this, but I'm still going to need uh, Howard to make a fighting brawl with a bonus die. And Martha, you can attempt to dodge or fight back if you wish. Oh, this okay. is good. I'd like that. Uh, so I have 27 under 30. And I will just roll again. And it's 27 again. I rolled the 24 out of 28 on my dodge. So my dodge is a normal success. Normal success versus normal success? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which means the dodge does work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she don't... responded fast because she was assuming that you were trying to do something else and just stepped out of the way rather than she instantly realized. Yeah. But what what I will what I well, if it's okay, Keeper, what I will have done is put myself between Martha and the exit. And then okay. try yeah, I think to that's reasonable. try to do it. So if she dodges, she potentially is dodging back towards the fissure. Yeah. Uh, and finally, Martha, you, you something weird happened. It's like Howard tried to grab you for some reason. You don't know who to trust. Everything's wild. Um, Clifford kind of has the gun off this guy. What do you do? Um, 
Okay, Clifford has the gun. Well, it's sort of between them. <laughs> he has good. the gun, but he doesn't have the gun. <laughs> I see. Uh, and kind of like from a quick glance, he seems to be focusing on uh, Clark rather than like on me, like how it is. He's, he doesn't turn towards my direction or Howard's direction. I'm assuming. Uh, no, he seems to be yeah. pretty much engaged with Cliff at this point in time. So I think I'm going to try and uh, tackle Howard and run off. As in knock past him? Yeah, just like okay. proper like rugby tackle. Pow, sure, that's going to be run. a fairly simple manoeuvre, so that'll be a fighting brawl. Uh, how are you responding to this, Howard? Uh, I'm going to try and grab her. Okay, that's a fighting brawl too. <gasps> that is a 35, which is a success. I got a 14. <laughs> which... Is that a hard success? Uh, 14 under 30, yeah, that's a hard success. Can I spend luck? You can. <laughs> can I spend luck? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I shit you not. I when I did this as a a prep, uh, what, the the players spent luck against each other as well. <laughs> just keep that as like bidding wars, but for luck. Um, so I need to spend seventeen, is it? Because I rolled exactly thirty five, and my skill is thirty five. Is it seventeen or eighteen? You'll need to roll eighteen. No, Just... seventeen. Seventeen's fine. Okay, S- spend. 17 luck. Yes. 50. I have my calculator out because why not? <laughs> is, that, is that to get a hard success or an extreme? Yeah, a hard. It's like a hard success. So if it's a hard success, then uh, you will barrel past Howard in this Don't case. Don't spend your luck on this. Out of you... game, you're still on our side. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, Keeper, <laughs> would I, would, <clears throat> in in the state of mind that Howard is in, would, would Howard, yeah, would, is is does he have his faculties to to actually tr- would he have used his luck to do this or or would he kind of be because he's been controlled by somebody else would Howard in this situation just try and do the action that's immediately in front of him and then if it doesn't work try something else Newman I am not making this decision for you <laughs> <laughs> but I was asking you to I always love rolling for myself in this situation that always keeps it keeps it spicy yeah if okay. you ask me. I will have you spend all of your luck down to a critical success to make absolutely sure that you uh, not, capture Martha and feed her to the giant evil creatures behind it's you. It's not that much luck. I've got 64 luck and I rolled a 14. I only need to spend 13 luck. Can I, I'm going to roll, roll a 1d4 if it's even. We try and feed her to the, the creature. If it's odds, I don't think Howard would have... Um, had the faculties in this moment to do that. How does that sound, Phaedra? Uh, spending like is not something a character does, something a player does, and I want you to remember this uh, when my feelings <laughs> for you change after this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it is an odd. So he wouldn't. It was I've rolled a 1 on a 1d4, one um, but your threat also carried some weight there, Phaedra, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I love using out of character threats <laughs> to get my way in games. <laughs> so yeah, I think in this moment Howard he's gone for he's gone for Martha. Martha's barreled into him and he's just not had the body brain connection to be able to 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 grab onto her uh, as she's barreled past him. It's at this moment that the entire chamber around all of you explodes. Okay. Can you all give me dexterity rolls, please? Yeah. As literal rocks come flying down from the ground. Six over yeah. 85. Extreme. Nice. That is a success with uh, 32 over 55. Okay. 93 over 80. But I am going to use some luck here. <laughs> I'm going to make that a success. Water begins spurting from areas that you weren't really expecting water and rocks begin falling from the sky and it's like it's it's almost like dynamite exploded from all directions around you and as uh martha begins 
heading up this tunnel desperately trying to escape and Howard begins following her up the thing. Clifford, you are still engaged in a fight with this other guy who begins laughing and he begins mm. chanting while laughing in your face. And these words are coming down towards your mouth and Clifford, you're feeling like something's in your lungs. You can't breathe. Clifford, you can't you can't breathe and suddenly give me a power roll. Okay. It needs to be a hard. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm out of luck. <laughs> Literally. Your <laughs> lungs begin to fill with brackish seawater. And as you stand there watching as the water fills the chamber around you, watching your friends sort of disappear up the tunnel. You're only a couple of hundred feet from freedom, but this tunnel begins filling with water around you. But the fresh water around you is nothing like the deep, tangy, rotten seawater that arises in your chest and fills up your lungs and drowns you. Although, you take a certain amount of joy in your final moments for two reasons. The first is that you've solved that little mystery. The smell that was bugging you? Seawater. Specifically, the smell of Boston Harbour. Mm. When the tide was out and you were smelling that kelp as it roasted alive in the water. A smell that you never, ever thought you would experience in Tillings, South Dakota. Which is just about as far as it's possible to get from the sea. And secondly, you've not always been the best guy, to be honest with you. So Clifford, what feelings do you have as you realize that actually is your last action you've, well, hopefully managed to have help your friends escape? Uh, I'm glad to have been of assistance. Uh, what little assistance I, I was able to, to lend. Uh, I have certainly lived a spotty lifestyle. Um, which began when I abandoned my sister. And so I think in my last few moments, I, I think of my throwing myself at this particular problem in order for Martha and, and Howard to disappear. Uh, that's kind of a, an earned penance for me for, for ruining that uh, relationship so, so long ago. And as you lose control, you vaguely remember the feeling of collapsing onto this other man and him carrying you down. And blissful darkness takes you moments before the deep ones descend on your body. But, Martha, you yeah. are running through this tunnel as it begins to fill with fresh water and stones are falling down and Howard is pursuing you up it. And suddenly up ahead of you, there are two horrendous looking creatures with these large eyes that are like semi-transformed half-human variations of the things that were down below you. Would you give me a sand roll as you look at these things? Of course. Oh, I rolled outside my dice there. <gasps> it's an extra oh sand no, roll. where did the die go? <laughs> Three extra sand rolls. <laughs> I did a disappearing act with my die, but I'll use a different one. Well, that's a 35 over 49, which is a success. 
So you're only going to lose one sand as you see these two horrendous creatures. Uh, do you want to give me a dodge roll as they both lean in to try and grab you as you're making your way up this pathway? Yep. That is uh, 56 over 28. Um, but I might have luck to use. I can use 28 luck for this if necessary. Yeah, you can You can spend 28 luck to try and dodge past it. You'll definitely dodge past them if you spend it. Okay, 15 luck left. Hope I don't need it. Okay, so the next thing I need you to do, and <laughs> I damn shit it. you not, this is in the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Can't wait for this. Swim roll? Is to give me a luck roll oh. to determine whether or not you can escape from these tunnels, or whether or not the dynamite explosion has blocked them off and you're going to have to swim out. Can I just roll a swim roll? Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, luck roll. No, that's a 52 over 15. But I can roll swim. Not a problem. So basically, you can't get out this way. Oh. Uh, and you turn around. And there is Howard and these two creatures approaching you as they are about to try and grab you and drag you down here. The room is filling with water. Howard, give me a power roll to see. Because about a minute's past, the creature is distracted because it's busily devouring the corpse of your friend. Oh, I roll a 78. Over 40. Martha! <laughs> Martha! Where you going, Martha? Spend Come life. on now. <laughs> you can't leave. Do you, you want to push leave. that power roll? Howard, do you want to push that power roll? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's try. I will, I will, so I'll let you push that power roll if you so wish. If you do so uh, and break free, you'll be free. If you don't, you are going to remain under their influence for the rest of this adventure, the scenario. Oh. The speed oh, at which he threw those dice. That's uh, that's a 98 over 40. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, Martha. Come play with me, Martha. There's not much left to this scenario, to be honest, sir. It's There's okay. not much left of anything. Martha. Come on, Martha. All, all work and no play makes Howard a dull boy. <laughs> Martha. Can I swim somewhere, please? I just want to swim. <laughs> I'm going to, you're going to need to dodge these three before you can swim anywhere. Come there swim is a pool Martha. nearby, which leads another direction, which might work, but you're going to have to get past these three to do it. I don't... What you got, Martha? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> so do, dodge like three times? What is? No, it's just one dodge. I'm not that mean. It's just one dodge. <laughs> Unless uh, the fighting brawl that I get from Newman is better than our success. Oh, well, yeah. I failed anyway. <laughs> I got a 46 over a 30. So it's a fail. Okay. So I could use some luck. Stop it. <laughs> uh, I'll, roll, I'll roll the dice that makes the decisions. Oh. It's okay. She's been captured, man. You're chill. <laughs> and as the... <laughs> As this, as the water kind of comes up into this chamber and kind of comes up above all of you, the Fisk creatures shed their robes and they're these sort of weird hybrid creatures, half man, half fish with large eyes, and they easily move into this mode of swimming and they go down into these um, caves which have now been opened up, pulling the two of you along with them. And the two of you have enough co cohesiveness, uh, coherence, um, in order to kind of be aware of what's going down and realize that the chambers you were in, they were sort of blocked off and the dynamite has now cleared them, leading this passageway that leads down, down, down. And it looks impossibly deep in this blue, cold, beautiful water. And there's a faint glow coming out of it. And of course, you realize that this used to be a lake, used to be water, and probably was always connected to wherever these people's homes were. And there's something kind of pleasant, I think. Maybe it's your telepathic connection, Howard, to the, the creatures. But there's this sort of comfort knowing that 
the people that lived here before were isolated. They were alone. They were cut off from their families. And now, this reservoir will be full of their families because the way has been opened. And Tilling's Reservoir will once more be a haven for the Deep Ones. Nice. Could I, in my last moments as we're being pulled through the water, just turn and look at Martha and just in a gurgled, bubble, watery voice, just go, Come on, Martha! And it's just bubbled kind of as she's there. The last thing she kind of sees is Howard's wide eyes and big friendly smile just dragging her closer to the way that has been opened. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> I think, unfortunately, both of you drown at that point in time. But it's it was lo- a lovely thought. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you've made it to the end of... Um, the anti Yes. It was a really fun run through. I love a good TPK. It was really cool. Uh, it was. I. I love that you went down there. I love how it played out. I think that was a really fun ending for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the game. Thank you. Loved it. Thank you. Yay, we won. Oh no. Yeah. Wait, nice and short. Lovely, sweet, sweet and short. Yeah. Um, so what we normally do uh, at the end of these and how we're going to kind of do this in the future, for those listening, this is one of the first times we've tried this format, so we're still playing with it, is we're simply going to go around and we're going to talk a little bit about something that we found interesting. Um, we're looking to put out these Miskatonic repository things. They tend to be from amateurs. We're being fairly nice to them. And just talk about something we liked from the adventure. Uh, we'll go through each player and then I'll sort of sum up, talk about what I liked about it and um, give any other thoughts about running it. Uh, so, because he is, of course, the perennial expert in such things, I'll go Newman, Phaedra, and then Butcho, okay? Um, so, uh, as a scenario, I've really enjoyed the... I really like the whole Dust Bowl setting, and that there was this th- th- absolute antithesis contrast with what was coming, which was the water. So, you, you know, you're going from this very stark dire environment and the the description of the dust kind of blowing around uh to then having this well i think we all expected an an inevitable kind of gush of water uh one way or another but yeah i really i really like the environmental aspects of it because i think that's something that is is so atmospheric and mood setting in a call of cthulhu scenario and i think the antediluvians does that really well and with with the map that we've been given as well because we play 90% 90% of the scenario within the dust bowl itself, within the area that's going to be uh, flooded, th- there is always this feeling of concern that when the dam goes or when whatever goes, that's it. If you're still in there, you're buggered. Uh, yeah, really good. Really good fun. Pedro? I I really enjoyed uh, the pregens and the NPCs. I feel like I, I didn't read the other ones very thoroughly, but I feel like Martha is really well like tied into the scenario, has relevant skills, knows about the area. Um, and I also feel like the NPC portraits were very creepy, which concerned me and I loved it. And also just the NPCs had like individual character traits. I loved interacting with Ellie. They, they were all kind of alive. And I really, I really liked that in a scenario where the regions are diverse tied to the scenario the npcs are interesting and you want to figure out what's up with them i really really like that yep and all that's uh all that is very much in the scenario so the there's a good amount of writing that kind of gives you an overview of who they are what they want what kind of people they are so it was very easy to do all of those things would you yeah uh piling on after all that and and i agree with both newman and pedro um uh, when I say this, I mean this in the best of ways. This is a simple scenario, uh, like we were talking earlier. Like sometimes simple is better. It allows a little more uh, give for the players. Uh, it allows a little more kind of uh, well, just give. Uh, it, it it gives the space to to do interesting stuff, and and I really appreciated. Uh, even though there was a very clear narrative line. Um, it didn't feel like we were being railroaded at all. And that's 
when you write a simple scenario like this, sometimes that can be hard to avoid. And so when you are able to avoid it, that's just all to the better. So yeah, big fan of this one. A lot of fun. Yeah. I think all of those are fairly represented in the content of the actual scenario that you buy as well. Um, so first of all, it is it is beautiful. There is no doubt about it. When we looked at this uh, for the competition, the thing that really stood out about it was that it looked like a professional production. Everything about it screamed, this person knows what they're doing and they've made a good job of it. And it's pretty, it's gruesome, it's weird, it's wonderful. There's some odd ideas. Uh, the author has clearly understood the content and written about something that they're familiar with, which is really, really pleasant. What I would say about it as a scenario is that it is quite bulky considering the fact that we got through it in two and a half hours and there's quite a lot to it. And a lot of it is sort of not particularly connected into the plot and so it's not the easiest things to give. If you're the sort of person who really loves a big long scenario and you love reading it and you love getting into the world, this is really good. If you're looking for something super short and simple, it might come across as a little bit intimidating. But honestly, I read it and then I ran it and it was fine. Yeah. So just be aware it's maybe a little bit longer. But yeah, no, uh, since this was the author's first scenario, and I don't think it's even hit bronze yet, it definitely counts as one of the secret little, mm. uh, the super secret gems of the repository. This is the first one? This is their first scenario, wow. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us at the Miskatronic Repository matinee this evening. Please clear off any dust before leaving the theater. Thank <laughs> you.